aka Enosh Fett, and with me as always is the lovely Tiffany or Grand Tiff Tarkin. Yes, today she's uh, she's feeling in a Star Warsy kind of mood, I guess. But um, so we are here to talk about the first half of the season for season two of Supergirl. Okay, so uh, I think we'll just jump right in. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, kind of go from there. So Tiffany, yeah. your initial thoughts about the first half of the season. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I liked the things that they added. I liked the Superman and all the stuff that was going on with that, being able to finally show him, and also uh, the new guy from uh, not Kal El. He's the uh, from the House of El Manel, and Mon -El. also some things that we weren't so very happy about with the arc that they took with the sister. So yeah, well. Put Anyways, there. so, okay, so I will give you my, first of all, I was very pleasantly surprised by Superman. Yes. Um, it could have been a whole lot worse than it was, and uh, I thought he did a pretty good version of Superman, especially for the small screen. Yes. I thought that they did a, a good job with the effects. It seemed like the first couple episodes where they had Superman in, they really bumped up the effects budget, and um, I liked it that, for the most part, Superman didn't have to get put down for Supergirl yes. to shine. And that was my one concern really overall. They worked overall. well together. Yeah, they worked really well together. And so that was fine. Um, I like the idea of mon -El coming in and uh, here by the end of the first half of the season, there's a little bit of a romantic interest. What do you, what do you think of that, Tiff? I actually am interested to see where that goes because she's tried dating Jimmy Olsen and that didn't work and she's tried all the different people that she's been interested in so far, but I think that he's more up to her snuff with her. He's from the same kind of planet. He's got the same kind of powers, or at least he's learning them, and she gets to teach him. Wait, wait. I think I think he's more of a f good fit yes. for her. They look good together. They seem to have some good chemistry yes. together, um, and so I like that. So, it's like a Romeo and Juliet. They're from two different... You know, Capulets and Montagues is how they're acting. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, so the first part of the season started off really, really good. Um, and um, I also liked how they're bringing, they're involving Cadmus. Yes. In this, this season. And we got to see their dad, Jeremiah. Yes. Our friend and yours. That's right. Superman himself. We got to see Dean Kane, And so that was pretty cool. We've got, we've got to meet Dean Kane. And Dean is a pretty Super cool guy. Super awesome guy. So, so what, how, how did you feel when you saw Dean finally show up on the show? I freaked out for a little bit because I did not expect it when they threw it in there like that. And the fact that he couldn't come with them at the time makes us think that we have more that we get to see of him hopefully in the future. Yeah, so it was kind of interesting that they just kind of tossed him in where they did. Um, and I really like that. And, I, and it brings up so many questions yes. and so many things to think about going forward. Okay, so the next thing um, that is kind of interesting about this season of Supergirl is they've led one of the characters down a specific uh, road, I guess you would say. And I just want to put out there, first of all, I don't have a problem with gay characters on TV shows. Um, there are gay people in real life, so why wouldn't there be gay people on TV shows? And I'm fine with that. Um, what I do have a problem with sometimes is when, they tr when producers try to take a character that is that is one way that has been defined by one way and try to make them something that they're not. Um, in the case of like Jimmy Olsen, I've, I've said it before and I still say it to this day, Jimmy Olsen is the whitest white guy you'll ever gonna you yes. know, meet. He's got the red hair and the freckles and you take him and you make him this really cool, suave, African-American guy. To me, it just doesn't work. It's not that character. Just make him another character. Make him another character. It's fine. If you want that type of character on your show, it's just not that character. Um, and uh, he's taking over for Cat Grant right now, too. Yeah, and it's kind of the same problem that I have a little bit with the show Gotham right now, and that is that they've got this whole storyline with the Penguin mm -hmm. having sexual feelings for Ed Nigma, the Riddler, and it just kind of takes me out of the show because I... If it didn't happen in the comics, it's not happening in the story arc, then yeah. why add that now? Because it doesn't really fit. It just feels really forced to me. And um, and also, uh, that's how this whole thing kind of feels this season. So it makes you feel awkward. It takes you out of the story. I don't have a problem necessarily with... Uh, with, uh, with Yeah, with, with Kara's sister being gay. I just didn't like the way that they did it. Yeah. Um... You know, I mean, they, they had uh, Maggie come in, and 
Uh, if you want to make Maggie gay, she's a kind of a lo lower tier character anyway. So if you want to make her gay, whatever. Uh, but the way that she had that she got to lead her on. Yeah. I would be upset if, if I was gay. <laughs> I would be upset with the way that they portrayed it because yeah. they just kind of showed her leading her on, getting her to you know kind of fall in love with her, kind of like her. Okay, come Even, out of the closet and then okay. Oh, but I don't want to date you though. Yeah. Sorry. It, pushing her, it felt very frustrating. Yeah, you know, pushing her to it's come like out. It's climactic. Yeah, pushing her to come out of the closet and then what she did to just kind of. Oh, good for you. I'm glad that you did, but uh. Yeah. Yeah, not interested. So uh, that that really didn't work for me. If you want to make her gay, fine, she can be gay. But I, I the story they could have done a lot better. Just just come up with a storyline that actually flows nicely. And I didn't think that that storyline flowed the way that it should. The other thing that I wasn't crazy about, and I don't know how you felt, it was the the arc that they're going with Martian Manhunter and Miss Martian. It was we knew what he went through, but it. it I don't know. I just didn't like the way that it worked. Yeah, the story it's line. it's a weird it's a weird thing, and I, and I kind of find this with Martian Manhunter on the show is they have so much they can do with him, and they're acting like they don't know what to do with him. Why so angry? I understand you lost your whole family, and I get all that, so I understand that that would do something to you. But man, it it's seems been like a hundred years. Okay, <laughs> it just seems like he's just so angry all at the time. everybody all the time, and uh, you know. I get it. The White Martians, you know, were killing off the Green Martians, but she basically told him she saved him. She helped try to save her his people. She's there still trying to help him, minus giving him a blood transfusion that's messing with him yeah. and turning him into a White Martian. Apparently, but but why would you? Why would you still be so angry? And like, I guess my my question is, and go to the point of fighting her. Yeah. You know, and like you're gonna beat her down. She, she basically essentially saved your life in many respects. And um, she, you know, she told you she was trying to save the Green Martians. And that's why she ended up where she ended up. So I guess for that, the other thing that I have a problem with, and I know it's not, it's the same actor, Cyborg Superman. Yeah. Okay, first of all, if you have to telegraph every time you turn around, I'm the Cyborg Superman. I'm Cyborg Superman. No, you're not, okay? Yes, Hank Henshaw in the comic books becomes the Cyborg Superman. But that was because of a certain exact storyline with the death of Superman that he takes on the likeness of Superman, but he's half Cyborg, and he comes back and people just start calling him Cyborg yeah. Superman, okay? He That's not his name. name. His name is still Hank Henshaw. People just started calling him the Cyborg Superman because he looked like Superman too soon this guy doesn't look like superman why would he call himself cyborg superman that doesn't make any sense whatsoever and I, yeah it just it baffles me it's like cadmus had a brain fart and thought they'd throw that in there and see if anyone noticed well, like it, superman's not even a main character on the show because it's called supergirl just call himself the the cyborg or whatever but I don't. I just really did not understand this need. I, I understand where it comes from because yes, Hank Henshaw becomes Cyborg Superman in the comics later. But that's because he <laughs> looks like Superman, and I'm sorry, but the guy who plays he Hank Henshaw does not look anything like uh, the guy playing Superman. So it makes no sense to me. You, you don't just call yourself Superman just because. I mean, that's just a weird. It was weird. Was it weird to you? What? <laughs> Do you, are you feeling any of the same things that we're feeling? And then, of course, we, that basically brings us um, to the end of the uh, uh, first half of the season with, uh, they had the four-night crossover. That's right. And Supergirl's episode was a dud. It was, but she was better in the other episodes, though. Oh, yeah. She, she was great in the other episodes. That was all good, but, man... Her episode, it didn't even tie in. It's like they didn't even try, and then they're like, okay, now we'll put her in the other three episodes, but yeah, so it, much wrong. it was a three-episode crossover with a little bit at the end of Supergirl, which they basically showed the exact same thing on The Flash the next night. But it was like having her own little, like, throwaway episode, and in the last two seconds, Flash shows up with Vibe and was like, hey, something's going on. Where are we going? Episode ends. That's not having a crossover. That's having Flash show up for a minute. 
Yeah, so I like the characters that they've added so far with Metallo. Yes. That was cool. I like that. Um, I want to see more Superman. Yes. Sorry. Uh, you, know, you know, you know what's going to happen. You add, you add Superman. We're going to want to see him, so I don't know where that's going to go. But um, So that's how we kind of felt about the first half of the season. Excited to see how the second half goes. How do you feel? That's right. Why don't you leave your comments down in the comments section below. Let us know what you think. And uh, until next time, I am Enosh. V, a.k.a. Enosh Fett, and of course, Tiffany and Grand Tiff Tarkin. And we will see you next time on Spoiled. Spoiled.